Hi guys, today we're going to learn about volumes of solids with non-cross sections. Uh, let's refresh your memory. A cross section is pretty much when you have a 3D figure and you slice it, you are going to have a 2D figure. For example, let's look at this one. This one is a semicircle when you slice this cone, you are going to have here a semicircle. In this situation we have a pyramid, a pseudo pyramid, and when you do the cross section you are going to have something like a rectangle. Over here you have a semicircle and here the cross section is another rectangle and here you can clearly see that that shaded region is a rectangle. Okay? Today we will find the volume of a solid whose cross sections are familiar geometric shapes such as squares, rectangles, triangles and semicircles. Now, Let's start defining and how the, this connects to calculus. For cross sections of area that depends on x, taking perpendicular, please note that it's going to be perpendicular to the x-axis, you know that the volume is going to be equal to the integral from a to b of a of x dx. Please note something, here the limits of integration that you have are going to be depending on the x-axis. On the other hand, we have that cross sections of the area A that depends on Y taken perpendicular. Please note that here we have the Y axis. The volume is going to be equal to the integral again from A to B, but this A and B, they depend on the Y axis of A of Y dy. Okay? There are some great calculus applets using GeoAlgebra that can help you to see this and to, you know, see the 3D situation that you have, okay? So you can visit the link and I'll uh, post that in Schoology, okay? That's, uh, that link will be posted, okay? So for the first example, what you need to do here is you need to set up the integrals needed to find the volume of the solid whose base is the area bounded by the graphs f of x is equal to 1 minus x divided by 2, g of x is equal to negative 1 plus x divided by 2 and x equals 0. I'm going to stop here. Let's graph those, okay? So the first thing that I know is that my x equals 0 is over here, okay? That's your x equals 0, okay? Uh, the second thing that I know is that my uh, my 1 minus x divided by 2 is going to be a decreasing function that looks something like this and let me make it kind of like correct here something like that you have this as your situation okay in this situation we have that this is f and this one over here is g okay um, so what do you have what area because this is a 2d figure and you know that this is your x-axis let me right here that's your x-axis what area do we care about well the area in between the three situations you know that it's going to be uh, pretty much this part that we have over here okay so we have it here shaded that's the area of interest okay so and whose cross sections are perpendicular to the x-axis this is super important because this is going to tell you that you're going to be working with x's okay and are the following shapes the first thing that you need to know is that the base is going to be based on the axis, okay? So the base is going to be defined with axis in the definition. So they told you that the base of the cross sections are perpendicular to the x-axis. This is your x-axis perpendicular. It means that you make a 90 degree angle with the x-axis. So this, you know, that, that will make that line is perpendicular. But the base, more specifically, the base uh, of the figure is going to be pretty much a figure that it's coming out from here to here, okay? So this is the base, okay? It comes from here to here, okay? And the base could be anywhere here. So you're going to have multiple bases here, infinitely many bases to do that integral. So the base, to create this base, what you do is you do, since we're working with x's, I'm going to do the top function minus the bottom function, which in this situation is going to be uh, 1 minus x divided by 2 minus uh, it's going to be the g of x, which is negative 1 plus x divided by 2, okay? So that's going to be the base. That's going to be, no matter where I put this base, that's going to be the function for the base. So what you're going to do here, you can simplify the situation. So you have 
uh, that's not plus x, that's plus 1, okay? And that's minus x divided by 2. You combine like terms and you have that actually uh, the base is going to be 2 minus x, okay? That's going to be your base, okay? Uh, now, another thing that you can note here is my limits of integration, since I'm working with x's, are going to be from here to whatever point is this one. This is 0, but this point I'm not sure. The intersection of this guy and this guy, you know that you can find the intersection by set them equal. So I set them equal and I solve uh, solve for x. Okay, so as you can see, if I move uh, if I move the x's to this side and the constants to this side, you have that x is going to be equal to 2. So you know that this is going to be, the, in the integral is going to be from 0 to 2 because it's based on the x's. Okay? Uh, so now let's move on and see the figures that we need to find the volumes of. Okay? For this part, what we have is that we want to find the volume when we have uh, rectangles of height 4. Let's remember our base is 2 minus x. So you know that the area of a rectangle okay, is going to be base times height. In this situation, my area depends on x. Okay, uh, So what we have is 4 times 2 minus x because 4 is the height and 2 minus x is the base. Now that we have the area, we can find the volume from the previous page you have that volume depending on x is going to be equal to the integral from 0 to 2 of 4 times 2 minus x dx, okay? Even though they only tell you to set up, which we would be done here, I'm going to take the integral because this integral is pretty simple. So you have that this integral is 4 times and you have that it's 2x minus x squared divided by 2 evaluated from 0 to 2 okay when you plug the 2's here you have that it's 4 minus 2 so you have that it's 4 times 2 which is 8 uh, units cubed okay because it's a volume okay now on the next one that we have over here we have semi ellipses of height 2 okay so uh, what's the situation here the situation that we have, uh, we don't know the area of an ellipse, but they are giving it to you. First and foremost, please remember that you have that an ellipse looks like this, okay? So what's A and B? This is pretty much A and this is B, okay? What we have in the semi-ellipse, okay, what we have in our figure, the base, we know that it's 2 minus x, and they are telling you that the height is 2. So this is what we have, okay? So we know that b for this situation is not 2 minus x it's going to be 2 minus x divided by 2 so the area of the semi ellipse depending on x is going to be equal to pi times 2 times 2 minus x divided by 2 and that's an ellipse but we have a semi ellipse if it's a semi ellipse then you need to put a one half here as well are we okay with that so what you have here is that you cancel the 2's and you have that this is equal to pi over 2 times 2 minus x and that's your area of the semi-ellipse, okay? But that's not what we want, we want the volume. So the volume is going to be equal to the integral from 0 to 2 of pi over 2 times 2 minus x dx. And please remember that they just ask you to set it up so we can just leave it like that, okay? Because this instruction, it was to set up, okay? Uh, of course, you can integrate that. That's not that bad to integrate. Actually, it's pretty straightforward. It's by units cubed, okay? So let's look at the following example over here. Uh, they ask you to set up the integrals needed to find the volume of the solid whose base is the area bounded by the circle x squared plus y squared equals 9 with the indicated cross sections taking perpendicular to the x-axis. As usual here, what I recommend you to do is first draw the figure, okay? Uh, so here we are going to draw the circle, okay? So uh, we have a circle there. It wasn't, it wasn't um, dark enough, so I'm just making it there so you can see it, okay? So you know that in this situation, this is 3, this is negative 3, 
this is 3 and this is negative 3. So the area that we have here in 2D, okay, the 2D uh, situation, that's what I can draw, okay, it's all this situation, okay, that's, that's the 2D figure, okay, and we are very happy because it's bounded, so it works very beautiful. Now, with the indicated cross sections taken perpendicular to the x-axis, so the x-axis is telling you that we're going to be working with x again. So perpendicular to the x-axis, if this is the x-axis, you know that your base is going to be somewhere along here, right? Your base could be here, okay? So let's do a perpendicular line there, okay? So it's from here to here at any point here, right? Because we're going to have like a bunch of, in this situation, we are going to have squares, okay? Line up in 3D here, okay? So what we have here is you have a top and bottom situation, but your expression is not in terms of x. So what are you going to do? You are going to make it in terms of x. From uh, Algebra 2, you learn that we can clean up this solving it by y. So you know that y squared is equal to x squared, actually uh, is equal to not x squared, to 9 minus x squared. Do you agree with that? Uh, since I want the y by itself, you know that y is going to be equal to plus minus the square root of 9 minus x squared. So from here, you know that uh, pretty much this part of the this part of the circle, okay, your quadrant 1 and 2, is going to be y equal the square root of 9 minus x squared, the positive one. On the other hand, what you have is that the part that it's in quadrants 3 and 4 over there, okay, the one that I just shaded, you have that it's y equals negative the square root of 9 minus x squared. Do you agree with that? So in this situation we have a top and bottom, okay? So you have that the base is going to be equal because we have that it's based on x's, right? So the base is going to be equal to the top function which is going to be square root of 9 minus x squared minus minus square root of 9 minus x squared okay so you can see that these are like terms so this is going your base is going to be equal to 2 square root of 9 minus x squared okay so this is your base okay super important that's going to be this distance okay at any point there okay so what are we going to do now you are going to find uh, you know the volume when you have squares what's the business here if you have squares you know that the area of a square depending on x because remember perpendicular to the x-axis okay uh, so what we have here is uh, you know that the area of a square is going to be side square length square or however you want to call it base square okay so we have that it's going to be 2 square root of 9 minus x square okay square okay so uh, that's that's what we have, okay? Uh, that's your area, okay? And this is a horrible square, okay? Uh, so what's the volume here? This one we can also clean it up as four times nine minus x squared. So uh, what's going to be the volume? The volume with respect to x is going to be equal to the integral, and you're going to tell me how in the world I know the limits of integration. Well, remember we're working with the x's, so you are going to look at your x-axis. It's going to be from here to here. In this situation, you have that that is negative 3 to 3 of 4 times 9 minus x squared dx, okay? And that's going to be the setup. Please remember that I'm just asking for the setup, okay, um, for this situation, okay? And then you can integrate this. The integral is also pretty simple, and then that would be in units cubed, okay? Uh, the next one that we have over here, uh, let me put all the information, is uh, an equilateral triangle, okay? The area of an equilateral triangle is side square uh, times root 3 divided by 4, where S is each side of the triangle, okay? So uh, we know that we do have the side. It's the base that we found at the beginning. That's why I always find the base at the beginning. Remember, this is based on axis, so you have that it's going to be what? It's going to be 2 times root 9 minus x squared, everything to the power of 2 times root 3, and all of this divided by 4. 
What you can see is when I square this, this is a 4, cancels with the 4, so you can simplify this as root 3 times uh, 9 minus x squared because this square cancels the square root, right? Because they are multiplying everything, so that's pretty easy to see. Okay, so this is going to be the area of the equilateral triangle. Now, but we don't want the area, we want the volume. So the volume is going to be the integral again from 3, negative 3 to 3. Again, remember we are looking at the x axis. So you have from negative 3 to 3 of root 3 times 9 minus x squared dx. And that's going to be your volume for this problem. So for this problem, you have that the base of a solid is bounded by the equation y equals x squared, y equals 0, and x equals 2. For this solid, each cross-section is perpendicular to note the super important y-axis, meaning we're going to be working with y's, and it's a square. Okay, set up the integral needed to find the volume of the solid. Remember, here we just need to set up the integral. Okay. So we start with the quadratic equation, okay? So you know that it looks like a parabola, something like this. It's not perfect, but something like that. Then you have that y equals 0 is going to be uh, this line over here. And then let's say that x equals 2 is somewhere here, okay? So you know that this is y equals 0, this is x equals 2, and this guy over here, we know that it's y equals x squared. Okay, so the area of interest here, the one that you, the one that we care is the one that it's basically uh, bounded by all these equations, which is that yellow uh, thingy that I just drew. Okay, uh, so this is your x-axis as well. Okay, so but here we have um, the main thing here is that we're going to be working with y's. Therefore, my basis is um, my base is going to be perpendicular to the y-axis. So instead of having my base here, I'm going to have my base over here, somewhere here. So your figures, instead of facing you sideways, they are going to be facing you. Okay. Uh, so this is going to be the base. Okay. So you see the difference now. It's going to be from here to here. So instead of looking the base uh, and say, say, saying top minus bottom, here it's going to be right minus left. Please note that everything needs to be with respect to y and the problem that I'm just seeing is that this is with respect to x. So I need to make sure to convert this equation, you know that that one is going to be uh, equivalent of x equals root uh, y on this side and x equals negative root y on this side, okay, to make it work because I want it with respect to y. So now the base, I can see the base and the, le the right uh, equation is the x equals 2 and the left equation is going to be the actual parabola that I have here that it's in this situation root y. So the base is right minus left which is this one, okay. Uh, so that's your base. Now, uh, what are we going to do here? Well, I'm, my limits of integration, you need to be very careful because now we are looking at the y's. It starts at zero, yes, because of that intersection, but it ends here. What's that point? That point is going to be the point 2 comma 4. Now we're looking at the y's, so what's the part that we care about? 4 and 0, okay? So we don't care about the 2 because that's an x. Okay, we care about the 4 when we do the limits of integration. Okay, so the area of a square based on y is going to be equal to the length square, okay, which is going to be the side square. Okay, you know that to set up the integral, okay, we to find the volume, we need to set up the integral with respect to y. So it's going to be the integral from 0 to 4. Okay, now you understand why we have this 4, okay? And uh, of 2 minus root y to everything to the power of 2 dy, okay? So as you can see, since this is the, you know, the, the cross section are perpendicular to the y axis, okay? That's why everything is in terms of y, even the limits of integration. And you only need to set it up, so we are done with that. I hope that you find this video helpful. Bye!